Hey everybody, Tim here with Owl Eyes Wilderness Survival. This is part four and the final part to our acorn processing series. In this video, we're gonna show you how to leach acorn flour to get it ready to eat. Now, if you want in-person training, or even if you live far away and you just wanna learn from Owl Eyes Wilderness Survival, we have many options. We have tons of classes going on all the time throughout New England. And we also have a monthly skills club in which anybody anywhere can tune in. And it's only 15 bucks a month and we do tons of different stuff throughout the month. Each month is a different topic and you earn a cool patch at the end of the month. Check us out at OwlEyesWilderness.com. Now we can't just eat acorns raw or unprocessed. What we need to do is leach them because they're very high in tannins or tannic acid and those tannins are actually gonna affect our bodies in very negative ways. We ingest them on a day-to-day -day basis if we drink coffee or tea. Uh, many plants have tannins but acorns just have way too much and we need to leach them out with water. There's two ways that we can do that and that's with hot water or cold water. I'm gonna talk about hot water uh, leaching first, then we're gonna show you the cold leaching method because that's my much preferred method and that's the way that I pretty much do it all the time now. Hot leaching is you use boiling water uh, in a big pot of water. You could use small if that's all you have, it's just gonna take a lot longer. The more water to nut meat uh, ratio that you have, the better. Now you're going to Boil the acorns in water, boil them 10, 20 minutes. All right, I've even boiled them up to 30 minutes. Uh, and then I'm gonna change that boiling water. If you have one pot, just pour the boiling water out, then bring it to a boil again and keep that going. There's really no recipe for when it's done. You just need to taste test and make sure that there's no astringency. The other way to do it, and in my opinion, the more effective way to do it is to have two pots of water boiling. So that way you don't have to wait for it to come to a boil. And I've also heard in the past, I'm, I, don't, I haven't done many experiments to see how this works. I've done both methods and they both work. So if you take boiling water, pour it off, and then you put cold water in, it actually like shrinks the uh, cells or constricts them a little bit. And it might be actually harder for the tannins to come out. Um, that method works fine, but I just usually do the two pot water uh, method because it just seems to be a little bit quicker because you already have water ready to go. So you don't have to wait for anything to come to a boil. Now, boil those up. Uh, the testa will come out into the water. Um, and I like to take a strainer scoop and uh, kind of just scoop out the testa, get rid of it. There's always going to be some testa. You're doing this with acorn bits or even just the acorn nut meat itself without breaking it up. Uh, I like to break it up a little bit just to increase surface area, but don't do this with flour. Now, take the uh, acorn bits when they're done, right, after you taste test them. And you can do tons of stuff. You can make, you know, trail mix. You can dry them out, you know put a maple syrup salt on them and whatnot. You can grind them down into a flour. You can do tons of stuff with that acorn. I just prefer cold leaching. So that's the method that I'm gonna kind of rely heavier on in this video, uh, just because I think it makes a higher quality flour. It makes a higher quality, uh, just overall product for me at least. And I think it's just a little bit easier because it does require a little less being there with it, kind of, you know, instead of having to watch water boil. So let's talk about that. Acorn flour. So this is the acorn flour that we mashed up in the uh, mortar and pestle. All right, great stuff. And it actually has an excellent scent. I think it smells kind of like maple syrup. So give that a whiff, try that out. Ooh, so <laughs> um, there's two ways that we can cold leach. One way is we can leave it in the jar and uh, you notice I don't really have much cause I don't fill it up all the way. I keep it pretty low. Even half, half this would be good uh, to each jar or just have a bigger container. Uh, you can pretty much use what you have. I like glass, plastic, uh, not the best. Metal could be okay, but again, not the best, but glass is better just because nothing kind of comes out of glass and you're gonna have this soaking in there for a while. So I just prefer glass containers. Even a big glass cookie jar or something like that would work really good. Um, we could fill this up with water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually change the water multiple times during the day. And I'm right next to a stream here, but I'm just going to show you kind of like the at-home method. So what I do, get attacked by mosquitoes, is put that in there, shake it up. And then I just make, just to make sure, because you see how there's a little dry spot there, just make sure all the acorn meat gets in the water. Now this is going to settle, all right? And I'll show you what that looks like after it settles. Awesome. So as you can see, that nut meat sinks, all right? So that's the uh, flour. This is the starch. And then this is just kind of a mixture of everything that just hasn't settled yet. Um, you can notice though, there's a lot of the testa floats uh, and there's still tons of it. That's those 
uh, darker bits in there, but eventually they'll either make their way up or just stay in there and it's okay. Um, what I do with this is now I change the water two to three times a day. Um, the more water you have, the better. This is actually way too much nut uh, flour compared to water. But just for this video, it shows you the whole concept of it, right? Usually what I do is I put one of these in a two gallon glass cookie jar and fill it up to the top, all right, uh, with water. So uh, two gallons of water to one quart acorn flour. And what I do is just let that sink. The water is gonna leach out the tannins, okay? And again, you know when it's done, when you taste test it. So after a few days, give it a taste test. I have it go anywhere for up to uh, probably a little bit over a week to two weeks. So this way actually does take a little bit longer. Again, if you have more water, it'll be better for you. And just remember that you don't have to strain this out because the nut meat sinks. So you can just pour off that water, fill it back up. Just make sure to agitate it as you go. So let me show you how to use a stream to leach our acorn flour. Now, the other way I like to do it is to put my acorn flour in a bag, and I just tested this out in the water. Um, my nut meat is in there, all my flour, okay? And I'm at a stream, and what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to put it in the stream. You could just put the bag in there and the, the water's gonna um, flow through anyways, um, but it's better if you can find somewhere where the current can flow inside the opening in the bag and flow through the acorn flour out of the bag because that's just gonna be a continuous stream of water working out those tannins as it, uh, as it flows, right? So you're not really wasting water with this method or anything like that. So let me show you what I found. So uh, bear with me as we deal with the mosquitoes out here. It's terrible. <laughs> so uh, here's a cool little spot because what we have is a little hole here. All right, so the bag can sit here and there's a good current. So the, the, uh, the trick is figuring out how this bag can sit there and allow this current to get through, all right? And every spot's gonna be different, but if we can take this and wrap this around something, actually, there's a stick right here, to make sure it doesn't get away, all right? Bag doesn't flow downstream, but if I can leave that bag open, the thing that, that you gotta figure out though is you need to make sure that this current isn't too strong where it's gonna go in there, agitate the acorn flour enough that it's gonna come out the opening. So this is actually perfect, because I see it going in, and there's not really any acorn flour coming out at all, so that means the water's flowing through the bag at a good rate, um, and that it's not pushing out all my flour. So I would leave this overnight, come back and taste test it. You could leave it all day, taste test it, whatever. It might take a few days, it might take a few hours. So it's just kind of one of those unpredictable things. In my experience, I leave it for a night, then come back, um, and then it's good. Just make sure that uh, you put this kind of somewhere private so that you don't have to worry about people coming and thinking that this is trash and they're cleaning up the stream. Uh, even animals might even go after this too. Now, when you feel like your acorn flour might be done or even just throughout the process, all right, make sure that you're always taste testing your flour, all right? My warning to you is that if you use a natural stream, just watch out for uh, parasites and stuff like that in the water, maybe any other you know, fertilizers or anything like that in water. Um, when it is done, when you no longer taste the bitterness or feel the astringency, uh, squeeze it all out, all right? And then you're going to try to dry that out or just freeze it moist, all right? I prefer to just freeze it moist um, or use it fresh, obviously. Um, just so it doesn't oxidize as much. I prefer to freeze my flour uh, just so it doesn't oxidize anymore. But if you do want to dry it out, just spread it out on a baking sheet and put it in the oven on low just to dry it out. Mix it up, make sure there's good airflow in there and uh, you can dry that out uh, and just use it pretty soon um, just to avoid all the oxidation and it going stale. Um, but I like to freeze mine just so that it stays um, fresher longer and I don't have to worry about drying it. However, I'm always too excited to use it because after that long process, uh, we're gonna wanna eat this up right away. It's a lot of work, but we get a great final product that's delicious and a wonderful, wonderful wild edible. All right, acorn flour. If you wanna leach it this way at home too, you can put, the, put it right on the bathtub and have the bathtub drip in there, have your kitchen sink drip in there. Um, and I've had friends tell me that they've had success doing it 
in the top of their toilet tank. Um, not something I'm too interested in, but every time you flush the toilet, it changes the water out. But the moral of the story is if you can get either a current or multiple changes of water a day, you're going to cold leach your acorn flower. And that concludes our four-part series on acorn processing in which we identify the oak tree, gather acorns, clean them off, dry them, store them, crack them open, grind them, leach them. And now hopefully you get out there and you get to eat your acorns. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please reach out. And if you would like to see my acorn recipes, you can go over to my website, allieswellness.com, check out the blog, scroll down, and there is a entry on all my acorn recipes that people have liked. I did not put my failed ones in there. But again, my name is Tim from Owl Eyes Wilderness Survival. Get out there and have fun. Thank you.